The number one job of a realtor or any business owner is lead generation. You can't do any of that without lead generation. So the one thing I wish I would have known is that you are in complete control of your business and the lead gen is the first place you need to go. So the question is this, how do most agents find the secrets to succeed in today's competitive real estate market, especially when the top agents are keeping those secrets to themselves? That's the question, and this podcast will give you the answer. Hi, I'm Aaron Amuchastegui, and welcome to Real Estate Rockstars. Real Estate Rockstars, this is Aaron Amuchastegui. Hey, today, this was a, uh, a viewer or a listener request that I would get Andrew Perry on here. Andrew has quite the Instagram following, uh, pushing, talking about real estate and real estate agency. Andrew's from Ontario, Canada, and I'm excited yep. to talk today. How's it going, man? I'm great, man. I'm feeling good. Uh, where are you from, by the way? So I live down in Austin, Texas. So the um, oh, No way. So not a very Dude. quick flight to Ontario yet. It's probably a little warmer there. Actually, I heard you guys were having a little bit of a snap there. Cold snap? We had a cold snap, but I was golfing this morning. So the uh, <laughs> I was golfing at eight in the morning. Oh, I don't. And what's it like in Ontario? It's freezing. It's freezing cold. So where I am, I on the lake and it's wine country. It's very um, comparable to Napa Valley. Uh, it's that kind of a lifestyle, obviously not temperature wise, um, but it's actually, we call it the banana belt because we can grow grapes here. So Everywhere else in Canada, actually five to eight degrees lower in temperature. So we're a little bit warmer than the rest of the country, but nowhere near Austin, Texas. And I'll tell you, it's been a dream of mine to get to Texas, and one day I will. And when we do, we're gonna have a nice big steak. Oh yeah, the come come see us in, in Texas. The uh, we're actually doing a, a mastermind out here in a couple months for it's a real estate rockstars mastermind. A bunch of people are coming out to Austin, Texas. Agents from all over. One what? of the guys, one of the guys from Dubai is coming out. The uh, not as easy to get in the U.S. from Canada right now. I don't think so. Ontario is just above. I'm looking on the map, so you got it's like big area above Minnesota and yeah, so Michigan. It right? bumps, to, yeah, bumps up to Michigan, bumps up to New York. We're actually eight minutes from New York. Um, Buffalo is at Fort Erie. So where we are, uh, very, very close. We, a lot of us would go there shop. You know, my, my wife's Italian and all the old Italians would just go there and buy milk. So I guess it was cheaper there, but Hey. Yeah. The, we, we drove through that area, uh, once the, with my family, we, we I guess we crossed over at Niagara Falls and then kind of yep. uh, drove over are, yep. and then drove through Canada all the way around and then kind of dropped down, mm -hmm. uh, over in Vermont, New Hampshire down. And, uh, so did a, a driving tour up through there. To east, yeah. 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 Came, yeah. Came we did that when we, I used to live in Edmonton just for a couple of you, you guys are probably familiar with LA fitness, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I used to work for them, uh, and then I was uh, one of the district managers out west in uh, Edmonton. And every time I would come home, I drive, and you go through, you know, Minnesota, Michigan, all those, all those uh, northern states. Yeah. So how did you get into real estate? Beautiful. Uh, so actually, kind of that's a great segue to the story that I just told. So you know what? I was with the company for three years, rose up the ranks really quickly. Uh, sales was always kind of in my blood, not necessarily. Um, you know, something that I honed very well. And then when I met LA Fitness and my VP at LA Fitness, sorry, it's, uh, man, I tell you, working for an American company is just amazing. And, and what the, what you could learn in terms of sales strategy, building relationships, systems. Um, so I, I could say I got a little cocky and, uh, and I thought I was, you know, a little too good to, to be where I was. And I said, you know what, if I can make 25 bucks to $100 selling a gym membership, you know, where, where's the next big thing that I can sell that's going to bring me in the most amount of money? Um, and it was also because, you know, I thought I could really, I thought it was about time in my life where I should start out and go and do something on my own. I always had the entrepreneurial mindset. I always uh, didn't like to be told what to do. I always wanted to do things my way. And, and uh, now it's very funny that I am in the business. Uh, very little I end up doing my way. I have my team of admins and my sales agents that you know, I, we learn every day from. So it was interesting how I left that industry and moved right into the next one. And, you know, I had some friends and influences who were selling houses at the time. And, you know, this is five, six years ago. 
where how, the average house in Ontario was like 250 grand and now everything's over a million. Um, so to get involved into the real estate industry during that time where we had a couple of big spikes uh, and we're experiencing it now again, where it, it's, you know, almost like thrown to the wolves, right? So that's why it's really super important, as I'm sure you know, and your guests know is to really choose a brokerage that supports you in that regard, you know, training, support, technology, all that good stuff. So I started five years ago and I uh, haven't looked back. Yeah, I think it's a great point. If you're really, really good at sales, what's the biggest thing you can sell? Right. Like exactly. if, you're good at, if you're good at selling gym memberships, if you're good at, cause if you can sell one thing, you can sell anything and real estate really exactly. is that biggest sales item, the lowest barriers to entry, like the, what's it? So it's, it's pretty low barriers to entry in the U S you have to pass a test, right? You don't have to have a college education. What's it like up in Canada? Yeah. So you don't need any college education other than now where the program is actually through a college where up until two years ago, it was just a, a private entity that was offering these courses where you get your license. When I started, you only needed three courses and then you get your license, then you have to complete the other two, so five in total. And then it went up to where you had to complete five courses. Um, and then now they've continued that five course program, but it's actually through a college now. Uh, it used to be the Real Estate Association of Ontario, and now it's called Humber College. Um, so th that whole process for me only took me a few months. Uh, but now for all new recruits, it's probably anywhere between eight months to, to a full year. Okay. So a little bit more of the, and I think it's similar in a lot of places in the U S where you have to take some, a, a few certain classes first and some colleges yep. offer them. Sometimes yep. you can do it online So you take some classes to be eligible to take the test, but still relatively low barriers to entry for if you're the best salesperson out there, you know, go sell real estate. What's one thing that you wish like you would have known when you first started? Like you, so you've been in this for a while now, like yeah. and we, you've learned a lot. Like what's one thing you would tell yourself when you first started that maybe you thought would be easier or harder or anything? Uh, so the one thing that, you know, I, I wish I knew is that you're not walking into another sales job. You're not walking into a sales position. You are walking in as the business owner or the CEO of your own company. Right. That was the biggest, biggest thing I think that, you know, hit me very, very hard, very early. It was to the point where, and you know, now that I'm seeing, and I'm also the director within our brokerage. So I'm also meeting all these new realtors. And it's so funny because I could see it. I mean, it's not funny, but I, I could see them going through the same turmoil that I went through where, you know, a couple of months in, and then you start calling your brokerage manager saying, Hey, do you guys got any work I can do around the office? Anything that, you know, you, you could pay me for and stuff like that. So it, it was very interesting. If somebody would have said what I tell people now, what is your number one job as a realtor? You asked me when I first started, I would have said servicing clients, uh, you, know, um, you know, opening doors, finding properties. But no, the number one job of a realtor or any business owner is lead generation. You can't do any of that without lead generation. So the one thing I wish I would have known is that you are in complete control of your business and the lead gen is the first place you need to begin. Yeah, it really is that different thing. So it's not um, lead gen, understanding the business, understanding like like sales and marketing, right? Like you can yep. do this sort of version where you can message everybody, you know, on Facebook and it's free, or you can pick up and call everybody that has a for sale by owner and Zillow and it's free, or there's marketing right. ads you can do that start bringing people to you. But there's all of these strategies that the, it's almost like there's very little of it is actually sales, right? Like the, the uh, do you it's just, yeah, absolutely. I, I also run a team here as well. So I run a team. I've got my brokerage in Niagara Lake and my brokerage office in Muskoka. And so I run both of those offices. So I have the opportunity to sit and train with new agents. And um, it's very, very interesting because, you know, the lead, I always say back to basics. They're like, Andrew, you know, we need to get different marketing. We need to get uh, lead generation systems. We know we need to work with Google and Facebook. It's like, whoa, whoa, slow down. I'm like, how many people have you met this week? Well, no, that's what I'm doing. That's why I'm coming to you. I want to spend money on online. On like, Look, meeting new people costs zero dollars. It takes discipline and it takes, you know, a little hustle and a little grit, but that's completely free. And if you haven't hit your weekly goals or your monthly goals, if you're not, you know, uh, setting any of those types of goals, then, you know, you really need to start. But if you haven't 
answered that question with, well, you know, I've met a hundred people and now it's time to move on to the lead generation systems online, then you really need to start by meeting those hundred people a month. Real estate rock stars, this is Aaron Amuchastegui for a quick commercial break. So during 2020 and 2021, the real estate market completely changed. There's so much competition in the market, so many people trying to buy and sell houses, but there's hardly any supply, hardly any product, hardly anyone willing to list their homes. It's time for every agent out there to become a hybrid agent investor, to be able to reach out directly to homeowners to try to get them to sell or list their house. We've got a new website. Go to leadpropeller.com and you can set up your own investor buyer website in just minutes. You'll set up your own URL, set up phone numbers, help go through the leads, help reach out to people that aren't listing their pro their property currently and have them fill out a form that says, hey, I want to sell my house. And then as an agent, you can go through and make them a hybrid offer. You can tell them, hey, I think your house would sell for $220,000 on MLS, but I can either write you a $180,000 cash offer right now or I can help you fix it up and you'll list it for 220,000 on MLS. These are buyers that are looking for quick cash offers. Tens of thousands are submitting these forms every single day and they're skipping the listing process. But so many of you guys out there are such good agents. It's a great opportunity to get that lead and help them maximize sales price for their home. So again, go to leadpropeller.com and think about signing up for your own investor site. So buyers will start reaching out to you asking you to make an offer on their home. The, I love that metric that you talked about. So, so you bring on, so you've got a, a big team and I'd love to hear how you yep. grew that team in that process, but you, you work with them and you say, what are your metrics? What are your goals? So if yep. somebody isn't a part of a team right now and they're saying, Hey, I don't have metrics. What should I, what should I be targeting? What, are, what advice would you give them? Are there two or three things that you could say, like you just said, meet, go meet a hundred people. What are two or three things right. you, you're like, Hey, that's a measurable thing you can start working on. Exactly. So I always start off with what gets measured gets improved. And if you are able to set measurable results, it's not just, okay, I want to go door knocking. I want to go, um, you know, uh, stop people on the street or cold call. It's okay. Where are you going? What's your purpose? And how many people do you want to talk to? How many leads do you actually want to walk away with? It's great that you want to go door knocking, but if there's no measurable measurable results, you can't stick to the plan. It's the same thing why sports have have scores, right? You know, you, you can't win the game if you don't know what the score is. Yeah. So essentially what I do is first I break down, all right, what is your overall commission goal? Your total GCI, is it 100 grand, 200 grand, 50 grand? What is it? And then from there, we take a standard KPI measure, so your key performance indicators. And so what I do, majority of the people on my team need to meet 20 new leads. They, they need 20 new leads a month. So that tells us that to get 20 leads, you really should be talking to anywhere between 100 to 300 people a month because 20% you know, conversion is actually pretty high. So it's probably going to be more around 5 to 11%. So if you talk to 150, 200, 300, you should be walking away with those uh, anywhere between you know 20 to, to 30 leads a month. So as you're reverse engineering, I love that. That is very actionable for, for our listeners, especially getting started if they don't have somebody guiding them in that process. Yeah. So they're going to talk to, to between 100 and 300 people to get 20 leads. Over time... Like for every 20 leads, are you telling them, hey, that, that's going to get you a deal a month moving forward? Like after, after a certain amount of time of doing that, right. like how much value does a lead have if you're getting 20 months? So at any given time, you should have those, uh, those 20 new leads are just going to be refilling your pipeline. So you should be working with seven very active, urgent buyers and anywhere between 20 to 30 people who are on you know, the three months, six months kind of hot sheets. I don't know what you call it there. You've had them on your auto emails, stuff like that. And on top of that, you should be a meeting uh, with at least three sellers a week, or at least some type of CMA. We call it a CMA here, comparative market analysis. So yeah. we can have some type of listing appointment. You know, we need at least three a week because at a conversion rate, especially in a small town where we're competing against people that have very large names and large marketing budgets, 
we need to meet as, with as many people as possible. So by these metrics, we should, each member of my team has a GCI goal. And if I did it on average, it's about $17,000 a month. So that's based on your work ethic, your previous KPI history, you should be hitting $17,000 a month based on those 20 new leads. Yeah. What's your average sales price? Sir? Um, our average sale price in Niagara region as a whole is 680000 In our little town of Niagara on the lake, it's 1.2, 1.3. Yeah. The, um, I really like those stats, like an actionable way to like, I can see how you've been able to start growing your team and like coaching and guiding them. What's that process been remind me of the year you got licensed and what the process went from being like new guy in sales to like having to running two teams and two locations and brokerages and all that stuff. Yeah. So the biggest thing here is leverage. And, um, I know that um, Keller Williams in, in the States and they're up here too. They use that word a lot, you know, millionaire real estate, uh, book I've read a few times. Um, but you know, all the coaches here in Canada, anyhow, and anybody I've heard said anywhere between 20 to 30 deals is really where you should be starting to hire a buyer's agent or an assistant. I hired my assistant after like the 10th or 12th deal somewhere in, in there. Um, and the reason why is because I'm a big media guy. 90% of my business comes from agent to agent referrals. And that's because I spend so much time on Instagram. I spend so much time on YouTube, spend so much time on Facebook. Um, and, and the reason why I needed that assistance so early on in the game is that I knew what I needed to do. I needed to not be able to focus on paperwork, showing properties. I really needed to focus on the sellers and I needed to focus on the marketing and the branding side of things. So I'm more the face of the business now as well. Obviously I, I work with all my sellers, but all my buyers on my team uh, or all my team members take care of my buyers now. And I would have never been able to do that if I didn't have an assistant when I did, I would have been, you know, I would have got burnt out. I wouldn't have been able to hang out with my family. I would have been working every single weekend, which by the way, for my first year, I worked every single weekend. Saturday and Sunday open houses. So I didn't just, you know, come out of the gate and want to be as lazy as possible, but it is about being as efficient as possible. So if somebody wants to go join a team somewhere and they're interviewing, what questions should they ask? Like what's the, like when someone's sitting with you, what's the one question they should ask you if they're sitting with someone down in Florida, what's the one question they should ask that team leader to figure out if it's a good team to join? How low are my splits? Yeah. <laughs> So that's like the first that's one. Just, Every, that's everybody's first, especially new agents, right? That's the first question. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. Are you going to steal from me? If, if that's your first question, the team leader is going to say, thank you very much. It was great to meet you. Um, you have to understand what is the value and what's the purpose of you going on the team. If I had to restart my career, I would have joined a team at the very beginning. The reason why is because all that guesswork that you spend um, you know, on learning, what's the new thing in real estate? All this, all that. Uh, branding. But my website, before I spent months and months wasted on all of that stuff. If I had joined a team, I would have been able to get hopped right in, focus on the training, focus on lead gen, have an accountability mentor, and then off I would, would go. So if I was a new realtor looking to join a team, I would ask, what type of training do you provide? What type of mentorship? What type of marketing? And, you know, because marketing is, and again, ask to see some of it. I know some teams here that, yeah, okay, they say they do marketing, but it's very cheesy. It's never going to break away from the noise. You got to understand that the, the, your clients are not going to sign you because, or, or hire you because you work for Revel Realty, Remax, the agency, One Group, Compass, whatever. They're hiring you because of, of your brand and, and you and the relationship. But if your team leader is putting out, you know, under par, you know, uh, uh, marketing and like, they obviously clearly don't get it. Uh, that's super, super important. So you want to make sure that you're joining a team that understands marketing because majority of your clients are going to start finding you online. Now that's just the way it is. So Mark training, marketing and lead generation, are they covering your lead gen? If not, then what other type of expenses are they, uh, are covering for you? The reason why the expenses are, um, or should be a topic of conversation is just because, you know, we're really taking you away or taking you from your first year where 
Yeah, that's exactly what I just said I did myself. I spent so much money on stuff that I didn't need and got me nowhere. And then I was in the hole and had to climb out of it. So that's why it's important for a team to be able to cover some of that stuff at you know a decent split for that split to make sense. Yeah. Yeah. That the, it, it makes sense. Cause as you're starting, you're like, Hey, you can go on your own and you can go figure out what system works. Right. And there's plenty of people that they'll listen to a podcast. They'll go, they'll go check it out. They'll, they'll hear like, I'm going to start calling that and it starts to work. But what the team is yep. supposed to do or a good brokerage is supposed to do is they're supposed to fast track you. They're not supposed to say, they're supposed to say like, here, like log into this CRM and just do this, like, like showing you the action. So then you're not spending money on what works or doesn't work. I love that training and expenses because that's how you get like that apples for apples quote, right? Like here is the split, yeah. but we also pay for this, or here is the split and we don't pay for anything because a split's not the same, right? The, the, exactly. um, that, that training being the good thing. All right. The different side of that, if someone's saying, I want to be a team leader, I want to grow a team. Mm -hmm. How did you grow your team so big? Like what's, what is it just like, Hey, you're at, is it the opposite? You're just providing great training and you're providing great. Like how, if somebody says, I want to grow yeah. a team, what advice you give them? Well, so for me, it started because I couldn't handle the, the buyers that I had. And I started, I brought the person on as a, almost like a, a help, a helping hand. We had the buyer's agent. We just said, look, I really can't commit to you on a team level, but I do have a lot of overflow that I would love uh, your help in you know, closing these deals for me. And we'd work out a 50-50 split because I'm giving you these pre-qualified leads already. And then it just worked out so well because we, I already had the admin, of course, right? So right there, you've got a little team of three and you know, one person is doing the physical paperwork and the marketing. One person is making the connections and the other person selling the deal. It just worked so well that we decided to add on another person and another person. And then that's when our systems really started to get, you know, super, super targeted towards a top producing growth path where, you know, before it was kind of just a fly by night thing. So it was almost a learn as you go. I'll be completely honest with you. And I think that's what a lot of our realtors do is yep. because the more you, you, the more you, you go or the more you learn and, the more you fail is the more that uh, the more ammo you have behind your knowledge and mindset to, to actually take it to the next level. So that's kind of just how it started is I just hired one and then we just kind of slowly started getting bigger. And, um, and then, you know, our brand got out there. We've got well, our brand is called the fine estates team. So, you know, a lot of people take that as a, uh, you know, a luxury brand or somebody might take that as, okay, well, they just, you know, they do a good, good job handling estates. It's so uh, it doesn't necessarily mean one thing to every other person. And that's why people love it because we have this luxury, high quality brand, but it doesn't mean that we're singling out those 200, $300,000 homes as well. So that's how we were able to grow is we were, we were really focusing on the branding and marketing and content side of things while pre uh, uh, providing, um, um, uh, you know, technology support, and education and all that other stuff. Hey, real estate rock stars. This is Aaron Buchastegui, and I'm interrupting myself to bring you this commercial break from one of our sponsors. And I know, I know you guys would much rather listen to the content and not the ads and not the sponsors, but this is one that I'm actually super, super excited with. You know, so many of the realtors that we interview on the show, they talk about how much systems are important and how much follow-up is important. And I'm really, really excited about our new sponsor. There's somebody I've been looking at for a long time. And when they reached out to me, I said, yes, we have to be able to do this deal. So that sponsor is Follow Up Boss. You know, on an interview last week with agent Mark McGuire, I asked him what his favorite software and what his favorite system was. And he said it was Follow Up Boss. And then he went on for another three or four minutes to talk about why Follow Up Boss was the best CRM he uses. So there's a lot of superstars out, out there that use Follow Up Boss. Some of the stats they gave me, Robert Slack, 1.5 billion team in Florida, number one in the US. He uses Follow Up Boss to get a 400% ROI on his massive paid lead spend. Deborah Beagle, co-owner of the Ashton Group in Nashville, uses Follow Up Boss to guarantee the agents who join her team get two homes under contract in the first 90 days. That's a big guarantee for new agents. 
Barry Jenkins of the, your friends in real estate uses Follow Up Boss to automate everything so his team can produce 200 million on 25 hour work weeks. All right, so here's an offer. You guys are gonna get this special for being Real Estate Rockstars listeners. Now I've, I've used Follow Up Boss. We've actually used it in our non real estate businesses as well because it's so good at being able to set timers, set automatic texting and emailing. And what do, what do you know, best name ever, Follow Up. So here's what we got. For Real Estate Rockstars listeners, you get a 30 day free trial. That's normally 14 days. So in order to get this, you go followupboss.com forward slash rockstars. So again, followupboss.com, just like it sounds, forward slash rockstars. Go there, get your 30 day free trial and check it out. Especially if you aren't using any systems or any CRMs yet, this will be a great one for you to start with. All right, everybody, thanks again. Now back to our show. Yeah. What do you think? Um, you talked about technology. What's the, what's like your favorite technology that's out there? Do you have a favorite CRM or, or yeah. it's really helping you grow your business? Yeah. So we're using KV core right now. So KV core is our uh, main CRM as well as it comes with your websites, right? So you can uh, design all of your websites. You can design your landing pages. You can have as many landing pages as you want, but the really cool thing, thing and and this is, is really good for team leaders um is that you know we can actually divide the leads based on performance so again i don't punish people just because they're not necessarily making a sale I'm, I'm i might just be retracting some of their leads if they're not doing the work so we you know we don't take points away because you're trying your butt off but can't get a deal closed we're, we're taking the points away if you're not opening the system, writing notes, making your calls. So KD Core actually does that all automatically. So I don't have to waste time by having my admin check all the database every single day or once a week and seeing if people are making their calls and writing their notes. Inspect what you expect. So if you remember one thing from this call and you're a team leader, remember that. Inspect what you expect. So if if now that I have my, my uh, free time for my admin, she can focus on other things. So KV Core is, uh, is the number one technology that we're using right now. And then the other thing is that we're just we're just leveraging uh, an in-house social media guy. And I sorry, not social media, but a videographer. So I think that's been a huge key to our success is that we're the only team that decided to pay for that. Where and yeah, other teams are doing really well, but they're outsourcing all of that. We have our own in-house guy who does everything. So he shows up to our videos. He'll take behind the scenes for our vlog. Then he'll do an intro and we'll use that vertical for our Instagram. And then we've got the listing video. So we all just pair it very nice together. Uh, and it just works well. All this technology that we use, it just all works in unison. Yeah. The, uh, very cool. I'm going to check out, you know, KV courts. Look, I could see some of the stuff that that's built in there on it. So yeah. one of your strengths, you talked about referrals you come in from your social media. That's where you're kind of pushing yeah. out lots of different content. I think a lot of people say, I, I want to succeed at social media, especially agents. Like how do I grow uh, a, a social media? How, how would an agent grow a social media following like yours? Like what's your, what's your trick? What's your secret? What sort of content do you like to push out and what advice would you give people? So here's the biggest reason, in my opinion, why I think we, why I've been able to grow that account so big is that if you look at your average realtor's account, what will you see? You'll see just listed, just sold, um, excuse me, sold over asking 40 offers, uh, sold big logos, where if you go to my personal account, you won't see any logos. You won't see any just sold uh, banners. You won't see any of that stuff. You'll see personal content, lifestyle content, real estate content, some listings. I will do, you know, some of my, my more higher price listings. I'll actually put them on my personal account. But the majority of it is the documentation of, of what we do daily. It's advice. It's podcast polls. It's, it's um, you know, repurposed content. But it's also the consistency. Because here's the thing. Everybody knows this. The more you're on a platform, the more the platform rewards you. So that's why I'm on it all the time, every day. And I, I'll do you know two to three posts a day, usually one photo, one video, and one long form or short form. Uh, and then you know 15 to 20 stories. So I'm always that little circle on somebody's, uh, somebody's Instagram when they open it up. That's super, super important. But I think if, you, if you're trying to oversell, uh, people don't like that anymore. You know, uh, it, it, they really don't. The only, the only people that have a lot of success with that 
are really, really, really big teams that have a large following, large client base, and they're all just liking it, liking it, liking it. I bet you their engagement rate is crap, right? But if you look at my engagement rate, it's anywhere between five and 10%. So you might get a thousand likes and you might get 40 to 80 comments, which is, in my opinion, a really, really good job. So it's very interesting. And it's very interesting to see, but I try not to be as uh, self-promotion, uh, try not to do self-promotion as, as much as possible. Yeah. Little trick for listeners, right? So if you want to see if people's following are real, right? You do what Andrew's talking about. You can go click on a post and see how many likes did that person get and how many comments did they get? Because if they've got yes. followers, 40,000 followers, they should be getting 500, 1,000, 1,500 likes, like that 5% interaction that he's talking about. And you'll yeah. see people with 40,000 followers that get eight likes and two comments. And you realize that yeah. They bought 39,000 of those followers and, and yeah. they're there. So it's always, that's a great way to, you know, you're, I think you're the first person that talked about posting three a day and I'm looking yeah. at your Instagram page right now. And it is, it's very organized like that. You've got, here's a video of me talking. Here's a picture of yeah. real estate. And then here's an image with, with some, or it looks like another video, but like a kind of a different image, different text as you're pushing it out there. Um, Absolutely. Staying in front of, and yeah, and with that kind of Instagram algorithm, there's been a lot of talk about the algorithm the last couple of years, and there's a lot of things that go into that, but part of that is frequency, right? You're talking about like, it, yeah, it's going to say like, this person was just on, like this person just did a, a story or this person just did something. Mm -hmm. so consistency. Exactly. And, and it's a little bit more than, so yes, you have to post consistently, but you also have to be, uh, you know, consistently switching up as well. If you're just, for example, so even though you're posting consistently, it can't be the same stuff every post because that just won't work. Your audience will get bored for one. But once you find that mix, I'll tell you, I don't care about an algorithm. I never have, never, never said, okay, I'm going to post Thursday at eight o'clock. Excuse me. I just post whenever the hell I want. And it does well because there's always people on Instagram. So, you know, I can look at my, my stats at the end of the week and say, okay, so everybody was liking my stuff on Monday morning best. doesn't mean that I'm just going to only post on Monday morning. I'm still posting every chance I get. Or once I get inspired or once somebody sends a video and I really like it, I just post it. Yeah. Yeah. The, and it, and it just, and it just continues to work being authentic, staying top of mind and, uh, you know, and providing value, right? Like, and, and being able to switch up that value. That's it. That's right. So somebody's going to say, how do you come up with so much content? So like, <laughs> if you're doing three posts a day, like I, I asked a guy that the other day and he said, you know, go on Quora and, and he typed in San Francisco real estate and he could see the top 20 questions people were asking. And he's like, oh, yes, it says like, should I sell? So like, he just started like recording videos and content, answering those. Do you have any trick like that you've tried? What, so Absolutely. For anybody on this call or who's watching or listening, um, if that's that's going to be your quickest way to grow, no questions asked. It is not how I do it, though. However, I just post stuff that you know. We shoot a podcast two times a week, or sorry, once one to two times a week. So we've got a lot of content that we just chop up. Uh, we do listing videos a couple of times a week, so then we just chop that up. Uh, we list photos, uh, we list the, you know, we put, put the, um, oh my God, I can't even talk right now. We put the actual listing photos up, right? So there's your, there's your variable and consistency as well. So it's just, I don't research what people like. Uh, if I see something cool when I'm scrolling through my Instagram reels, I'll send it to my videographer and say, Let, for our next shoot, let's do something like that. Yeah. So that's the only, that's the only time that I'm really doing anything calculated. All the rest is like, you know, when you and I finish, well, we'll probably go over some clips and some highlights and we'll cut it up and put it on our Instagram. So that's basically all I do. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, I, I like it, man. The, yeah, sometimes, sometimes there's a trick and sometimes it's just consistent, but if you're in Instagram a lot, Right. Like you said, you're in it a lot. And it's because it's been it, like, and the more that you spend time in it, the better you're able to perform, the more you can see some of the other stuff. Like that's the other thing too. go find people yeah. just like, it's like find a mentor, right? You go find a mentor in real estate. You want to learn under that becomes your brokerage, your team leader. You go find people that are succeeding in social media and say, what are they doing? Maybe it's something that my people are going to like too. Andrew, this has been great, man. The, um, yeah. You know, the, I think our listeners are, are going to love this. There's a lot of actionable stuff. Any, any like last thoughts that you think everybody should know um, and then finish with telling people how to find you. 
Yeah. So honestly, the number one thing, if, if, if this, if you're a new realtor, uh, and I know this is going to sound completely contradictory, but really don't listen to other realtors. And what I mean by that, I don't mean don't listen to the advice we're given on your on podcast or, or whatever you're hearing. It's just that 90% of the realtors you meet, they're not going to be the realtors that you want to follow or, or be mentored by. And the reason why I know that is because I'm the admin of, of a very large real estate group. And I see 90% of the posts are just bad advice. And, you know, realtors who run, everybody runs their business differently. So don't listen to those average realtors. Don't listen to the people who are posting in Facebook groups. What you need to do is you need to go and create relationships with your mentor, your new team leader, your brokerage owner, and, you know, really start to, to, to work on your, your mindset change that you're now your own business owner and kind of following the same footsteps of people who are doing exactly what you want to do. Don't listen to those average realtors because that's why they're average realtors. You do not want to be average. Yeah. Be, that, is, that is a great way to finish up, Andrew. Like be selective, right? There's so much information yep. in the world. There is like too much information in the world. There's too much stuff in new, everything else. There's just way too much that we have to stare at. So you got to be selective and say, if I only have so much time and like there's 10,000 opinions, I'm going to, I trust these people. These are the opinions I'm going to go with. All right, Andrew, it, it's a Perry, right? A P E R R I E yeah. on Instagram. Any other exactly. should reach out to you. Well, you can, you, that's the number one spot where you're going to get a response from me. Uh, other than that, you can check out the final states team.com. All right. So much fun, Andrew. Thanks for coming on. Uh, this was great. Yeah, Real you. estate rock stars. Thanks for listening. All right, real estate rock stars. This is Aaron Muchastegui jumping in again to thank you for listening to the show. Hopefully you guys loved listening to that one. And I wanna make sure that you know about all of the extra resources that we have. And also we need your help. They say podcasts are free. You get to listen to podcasts for free. But what is the cost of that podcast? I would say if I could beg you to pay anything for that podcast, I would say the cost of the podcast is going and giving a review. So whether you download it on Google or Apple or YouTube or anywhere else, please go give us a review. Say what you liked, what you didn't like. It helps us get better guests. The more reviews, the higher we get in the right rankings. Right now, we are the biggest podcast out there for real estate agents. And we want to keep that spot because we know there's lots of podcasts out there. So go give us a review. Also, be sure to go to hybendigital.com. If you liked any of the resources that those real estate agents talked about, we've got a huge video vault of those resources for free. Every penny that comes on the podcast that we interview, they give us something that helps them get their deals or helps them work with their clients. And we put that in the toolbox in our vault for you. So go to hybendigital.com and you can get it. If you're looking for real estate education, go to rebusuniversity.com. We have all sorts of courses in there to help agents succeed in real estate, how to get the listing, how to negotiate deals, you know, how to become an investor, all sorts of different stuff, rebusuniversity.com. And if you want to chat with me, go find me on Instagram. And if you come find me on Instagram, you can send me messages. Tell me what you want to hear. Tell me what you liked, what you didn't like. We try to put a bunch of content out there too. You can find me in two different places. It's at rerockstars.com for our Real Estate Rockstars page or at erinamuchastegui.com for my personal Instagram page where I can chat with you about all sorts of different things. Thanks for listening. We'll see you again soon.